We visited war memorials all across our nation today to honor those who lost their lives while serving our country. But there's one U.S. conflict that remains without a national memorial. And Karina Walser introduces us to the group hoping to change that. The Carillon War Memorial in Bird Park is certainly one that catches your eye. And earlier this month, a group of veterans drew attention across the United States to raise awareness about a war memorial that doesn't exist yet. John Stragala is finally heading home to Georgia after riding cross country this month with fellow veterans. More of a bonding time for us, healing time. But it was also a ride to raise awareness about a U.S. conflict that doesn't get a lot of recognition. We were the first major conflict that anybody has ever seen after Vietnam. He's talking about Desert Shield and Desert Storm, running from August 1990 until February 1991. I came to the realization that, that a lot of people had um, forgotten about this conflict. It's why Scott Stump and, took a stand, uh, creating the National Desert Storm War Memorial Association in an effort to recognize that 43-day war. It was such a resounding and rapid success that I think a lot of people forget the fact that there were 375 people that made the ultimate sacrifice. But the memories are still fresh for the nearly 700,000 who fought there. It's difficult uh, on me personally, being away, that was my first uh, major deployment for any period of time. Including my dad, Kent Bolster, who reflected today on how different things could have been without the Desert Storm operation and if Saddam Hussein changed tactics. If um, some of the missiles that we were after hadn't, uh, hadn't been found and destroyed, uh, if he had deployed uh, chemical weapons, which he was capable of doing at the time, uh, things could have changed drastically. Now some veterans taking their efforts cross country to fundraise for a memorial in our nation's capital. I think it's absolutely fabulous. It's a it's a worthwhile effort. Close to 700,000 answered that call. All of them willing to pay that price if it was asked of them. We expected the worst, but we got the best. On your side, Karina Bolster, NBC 12 News.